Problem 7.3 is about bivariate distribution of x and y. Okay, so let's start again. This is a very um, basic one about bivariate distribution. So it's a good warm up for you. And then we proceed with more advanced one uh, relevant to bivariate distribution. So we are given the bivariate distribution of x and y. Uh, before I proceed, let me just remind you of how to read a bivariate uh, probability distribution table. Okay, so for example, this 0 0.3, what does it mean? This is the probability that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2, while 0 0.1 is the probability that x is equal to 2, but y is equal to 1, right? So I hope that you remember how to read that. So the first part, find the marginal probability of x. You remember how to find the marginal probability? Because x is given here in these columns, okay, this one and that one. So to find the marginal probability of x, all that I have to do is to sum the, the, the columns. And here we go. And now, because I, I did that, I'm able to then distinguish what the probability distribution of x. So let me put it here, right? x can be either 1 or 2, and the probability that x is 1 is 0 0.6, which is the margin probability, so I put it here, and x is 2, the probability is 0 0.4, so we put it here. Now, we need to find the margin probability for y, okay? Margin probability, so I add up the rows, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1, that's 0 0.6, and then 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and I will put it also here separately. Why I'm doing that? Why I'm putting them separately? Because in part C and D, I need to compute the mean and the variance. And we have seen uh, previously that in a table format, it's much easier for us. So to find the mean and the variance of X, Okay. Remember, mean is sum of x, p of x. So I will add here a column, x, p of x. And it's very easy here. Values are very small. So it's 1 times 0 0.6, 0 0.6. 2 times 0 0.4, that's 0 0.8. Okay, I sum it up because we need that for the mean. And the mean is sum of x, p of x, so 1.4. What about the variance? Remember, it's sum of x squared p of x and then we subtract the mean squared so i will add a column x squared p of x again this one comes from what from one squared which is one times 0 0.6 so 0 0.6 second one it's two squared two squared so four times 0 0.4 so that's 1.6 then we sum it up and we subtract from this sum, sum which is here we subtract the mean squared. The mean is 1.4, so we put it here and we square it, so we get 0 0.24. Now let's do the same for y. Obviously, we're going to get the same thing because also y has the values 1 and 2 as in x, and the properties are the same. So we do this, we do that, we do y squared p of y, which allows us to find the variance. And of course, we can find the standard deviations of x and y by square rooting these. Okay, so these were very, very simple, and we'll move to more advanced calculations in the next problem. All right, let's go. This problem is a continuation of problem 7.43, when where we were given the uh, bivariate probability distribution of x and y, which I'm showing it again here. Okay, that was from the previous problem. And now we are asked to find the covariance and the coefficient of correlation. So let's start with the first one, covariance. But, uh, okay, let's do that. The covariance, you remember this from uh, previous problems, that the covariance of X and Y is the summation of X times y times the bivariate distribution or the joint distribution of these specific values and then we, we subtract the product of their mean so in other words let me show you here okay how to do the summation this part okay look so i will be doing this it's x so one times y one times their corresponding joint priority 0 0.5 plus 2 times 1 times 0 0.1 plus 1 times 2 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times 2 times 0 
right easy so let me show you this uh, first I'm adding that just reminding you that these were the means that we got in uh, problem 7.43 and now I'm ready to uh, write down the full formula for uh, the covariance so these are the parts that I was demonstrating how to read in the table and then we subtract the product of the means so the first part is 2.1 we subtract the product of the mean which is 1.96 and we get 0 0.40 okay now we need to find the correlation the correlation is the ratio of the covariance by the products of x and y uh, so standard deviations of x and y now in the previous problem we found the variances of x and y and they were equal to be 0 0.24 and we can get their standard deviation by square rooting that and now we're ready to plug these values in the coefficient correlation equation and here we go we get 0 0.583 okay let's proceed okay so what do we have here um we have uh, a sign on a, in a gas station uh, it says that or they encourage um, cars to or drivers to uh, check their oil um, and they are claiming that out of uh, one out of four cars arriving to the station um, prove to need um, uh, oil change right or uh, adding oil so the question we have uh, a number of questions here and the question about the priority of, uh, uh, for example, the first one, one out of the next four cars needs oil. So how do we, um, how do we answer these problems or these questions? First, we we need to identify what kind of priority we we have here. Um, the context of the problem let us uh, think about uh, binomial. Why? Because it seems here we have a binomial experiment. Let's see, remember we have four conditions for the binomial experiment. So if, I, if I'm if i seeing that the trials of my experiment is this, uh, a car arriving to the pump station, okay, or to the gas station. Um, so this would be every trial. And uh, we have a fixed number of, of these trials. So yes, uh, if you read the questions, we are... Uh, for, uh, trying to find priority for a fixed number of tries, right? In the first one, one out of four arriving. So we have four cars arriving. Second one, two out of the next eight cars. So very specific, the number of, of trials, okay? So this is N, which is the first condition of, of, uh, of binomial experiment. The second one, remember, it, 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 we need to know the priority of a success and a failure. So, do we have here a success and a failure? Yes, we have. If we call a success that a car do need oil uh, change or adding oil, as um, was advised by the pump station, that we can call that a success. And what's the failure? It does not. Okay, it does not uh, need that. Now, do we have a probability for the success and the failure? Remember, do we have a P? Do we have one minus P? Yes, because we are given, according to their claim, okay, that one out of four cars, let me just um, underline this for you, one out of four cars needs to have oil added. So that would be the probability P, okay, one over four, so 0 0.25 which means that the complement of that would have a priority of 1 minus p, which is 0 0.75. Now, the last one, which is very important, are the trials independent? Yes, because a car arriving, whether it needs to have an oil added or not, does not have any effect on the other car coming, whether it needs a... a uh, uh, oil added or not right so these are independent trials and this is a very important uh, um, condition for the binomial experiment so now i'm i'm really comfortable to use my uh, binomial priority uh, formula okay which says that p of x is equal to 
So P of X is N factorial, where N is the number of trials, divided by X, where X is the specific value of X I'm interested in, um, N minus X factorial, P is the probability of a success, and 1 minus P is the probability of a failure. So let's use that to answer the three questions. The first one, one out of the next four cars needs all. So what do we have here? We have an N of four, right? We have four trials, four cars arriving, so four trials, and we want to find what the probability that one out of these, so X is one. So I simply substitute N with four and X with one in the top formula, and I will get P of one. So here we go, we get P of one to be 0 0.422. Now, second one, two out of the next eight cars what does it mean that means now i have eight trials so my n is eight and i'm interested for p of two x is two so that's it i simply substitute n with eight and x with two in the top formula and here we go we get 0 0.311 and the third one three out of the next 12 okay so in the last one n is 12 so n is 12 and x is 3 again just substitute these in the p of x formula and you get 0 0.958 okay i hope that was clear it's very straightforward all what you have to do is really uh, to first identify your experiment is it a binomial experiment this is very important because then applying the formula is very straightforward all right Okay, so let's move on.